An object moving along a curve in the xy plane is at position x of t comma y of t at time t, where dx dt is tangent of e to the negative t, dy dt is secant of e to the negative t. It says t is greater or equal to 0. At time t equals 1, the object is at position 2, negative 3. Part A. Write an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the position 2, comma, negative 3. To write an equation of the line tangent, we need point and slope. We already have a point, so we just need slope. For parametric equations, your slope dy dx is going to be equal to dy dt over dx dt. Again, we're given dy dt, it's secant of e to the negative t, and dx dt is given as tangent of e to the negative t. So we need to find the slope at the point 2, negative 3, and back in the original problem, 2, negative 3 corresponds to t equals 1. So we're going to plug in 1 for these t values. So I have dx dt as our y1 and dy dt as our y2. Secant of x is 1 over cosine. So since tangent is our y1 and secant is our y2, we're going to go ahead and plug that in. And we're plugging 1 into both functions. So you get 2.781. And now that we have slope and we have a point, you can plug them right into the point slope form and you get y plus 3 equals 2.781 times the quantity x minus 2. Part B says find the acceleration vector and the speed of the object at time t equals 1. For the acceleration vector, you need the second derivative when t equals 1. Right now we have y1 as dx dt and y2 as our dy dt. So I'm going to quit out of here and we're going to use the function math 8 because math 8 is taking a derivative. So I'm going to go d dx and then first I want to do the derivative of dx dt. So that's going to be the derivative of y1 because that's our dx dt and we're going to plug in 1. And you get negative 0.42253. We're going to do the same thing for y2. So we're going to press math 8 and then we're going to plug in y2. And again, we're evaluating this at x equals 1. So you get negative 0.15196. So finally, our acceleration vector when t equals 1 is in vector coordinates negative 0.423 comma negative 0.152. Okay, next we want the speed of the object when t equals 1, and so you need your speed formula, which is the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared when you've plugged in 1 for t. So I just set that up, and now I'm going to plug this straight into the calculator. Make sure when plugging in you're mindful of your parentheses, and you get 1.139. So our speed of the object when t equals 1 is 1.139. Part C says find the total distance traveled by the object over the time interval from 1 to 2 inclusive. Our total distance formula is the integral from 1 to 2, the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. And we're going to use the calculator to evaluate this. We already have dx dt as our y1 and dy dt as our y2. So we're going to press math, and then we're going down to 9. Okay, I have everything set up. It's the integral from 1 to 2, the square root of, and then again, y1 is our dx dt. So I squared that, plus y2 is our dy dt, and it's squared. And then I have dx at the end. And you get 1.059. So the total distance traveled by the object over the time interval from 1 to 2 is 1.059. Part D says, is there a time, t greater or equal to 0, at which the object is on the y-axis? Explain why or why not. Since we're given at the time t equals 1, the object is at the position 2, negative 3, we need to check where this object is when t equals 0. And again, we're concerned with the x movement, so we're going to be integrating dx dt. So to find the x position when t equals 0, we're going to start with what we have, which is the x position when t equals 1. And then we integrate from 1 to 0, because this is what we have and this is what we want. And again, we're integrating the dx dt. The x coordinate when t is 1 is going to be 2. And I just wrote this in the right order. I brought the negative out and then flipped the limits. And remember, dx dt is our y1. So we get 1.224. Okay, I wrote this out. When t equals 0, the particle starts at x equals 1.224, which is to the right of the y-axis. Since dx dt is tangent of e to the negative t, I rewrote this as tangent of 1 over e to the t. No matter what you plug in, this will always be positive, therefore tangent of a positive is going to be positive. That means your x direction movement is going to be to the right. So I wrote, the particle moves to the right for all t greater or equal to 0, therefore the particle is never on the y-axis.